Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back with another video with Linksy. Today we're going to be doing a early game guide for Odysseus on a Total War Saga Troy in the Mythos mode. Well, basically, it is the Mythical Creatures mode. It is one of the so-called hardest campaigns to play. However, I'm going to show you today how to do so it very easily and within three turns stabilize yourself, fix your early game economy and prepare yourself for a very successful campaign. Shall we get started? You start in the region of Ithaca with a rather decent army. Sadly, you start with Sirens, which are utter gobshite from what I tested them with. You could do some microwing with them. They're semi-decent at missile damage. However, they're flying and they get picked off rather easily. So. I, I kind of get rid of them after the first turn. If they die, I don't care. Uh, they're a waste of resources. You want to go to pick your spy, go to Krentoy and carry out the Murmurs of Sedation. This works 50% of the time, so you're going to be absolutely fine uh, of just even restarting your campaign if you want. That weakens that garrison significantly, and I'm legend that you're going to want that. This is the first fight you're going to have against Testius, and you're just going to just fight it. You can auto resolve this, you can fight it. I'm gonna auto resolve it for to show how simple and easy the early game of this campaign can be. If you fight it, obviously you're gonna get much less losses than this, but of course this is up to you. Auto resolve the battle and you actually win the fight. Get you into replenishment because you're gonna need that. Again, if you fight this, you're gonna take way, way less losses. I would recommend you read all of these little things. There's a little Button down here, the missions which you should really take a look at as you go along. And then you're going to attack the town of Cranoy and you're going to fight this because otherwise it tells you you're going to lose. But trust me, this is a very simple fight. You have a lot of skirmishers and these skirmishers are still just as broken, just as strong as when uh, we first got Troy. Also, good thing about this uh, settlement, it is still a very basic settlement, so the enemy tends to uh, be more aggressive if they do not have a proper defensive position. And when they tend to do that, they do mistakes. They do not have any heavily armored units, except, of course, their leader, their hero. And this means that your javelins and your ambushes are going to be really, really good. Just keep in mind that those three slingers will pick off your sirens very easily and even though they're something that you want to get rid of as soon as possible try to hold on to them for the coming fight start deployments you can choose the environment you're fighting in and now we're gonna fight here most of your units uh you can actually deploy quite ahead because they are ambushing units so you're gonna be able to do fine Deploy in this manner with the exemplary ambushers and ambushers to the right and your sword skirmishers and heavy sword skirmishers over here. Make sure your heavy sword skirmishers are actually the farthest to the left because they will hold your flank much better. And then with the rest of your units, you will charge forward. Especially with your sirens, you're going to bring them around that way. Adjust your army according to how they present yourselves. And as you can see already, those young spears are not having a great time. Also good at this point to let you guys know that I am doing this uh, guide on extreme unit size. It varies a little bit from unit size to unit size in terms of difficulty. I found the uh, most quote-unquote normal unit size would be the large... Um, rather than the ultra or extreme but hey to each of their own fall back with your heavy source skirmishers they're taking a little bit damage but that's absolutely fine we put them there for a reason and Odysseus is going to start shooting over here we will go and start dealing with them and you will flank now we will charge and we will pin them down as necessary with our ambushers back here we're shooting into the rear of these units and that is a basically making them unable to do pretty much anything in confront of your units. You could also put your sirens in melee and start chasing off those Ar Archean slingers and dealing a lot of damage. As you can see, they are slowly but surely getting wiped off the map. You go over there, stop fighting the hero and get uh, an, uh, Odysseus to shoot at the hero. Place down your sword skirmishes in a way they can actually use their ammunition and voila, we've started to break their rank. 
you can get extra missile damage as of right now and you guys fall back as well the heavy sword skirmishers they're gonna live through this they're of course taking a little bit of damage but that is absolutely fine we've engaged their missile units heavily and there it is their front line has shattered now we chase after what's left and actually you three charge at them and you keep shooting at him we're basically chasing off the Arcane Slingers. The AI has Skirmisher mode on, meaning that once you have Skirmisher mode on, they will keep running if you run towards them. And with a Flyer unit, that is just absolutely brilliant. Uh, the Sniper Odysseus is going to keep doing a lot of damage. And why are you not running? Run after them. Those guys are pretty much gone for. Uh, just go and finish them off. They're down. And you charge over here to deal with them. And that is the first proper fight, and honestly, the only fight that you have to do to stabilize yourself in the early game. Um, okay, let's go support Odysseus. Those guys are broken. And the good thing about these guys, they fire while moving forward. So they are going to do a lot of damage. Okay, Odysseus is taking a little bit too much damage for my liking. Okay, let him run away, and... Boom. Ambushers are always going to do well. We lost a little bit more than I would have liked, but that is absolutely fine. I'm going to take a moment to point out how many kills the ambushers got. Getting more of those is going to be really important, but at the same time, the heavy sword skirmishers and the sword skirmishers, they're the MVPs here because they held the line while doing a tremendous amount of damage. You're going to want to occupy, not loot and occupy, you want this region to be as stable as possible. It is your home region after all. And of course, good old Odysseus leveled up. Now, I would recommend that you give him damage resistance and extra movement speed, as you never really want to get him mounted. You can mount him on Chariot, I believe. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I believe you can mount him on Chariot, but you don't really want to do that. So get Cheat Hades so he can run away faster and get more damage resistance which is essentially ward resistance for all of you warhammer players out there now at this point you're going to want to just put three sword skirmishers recruiting you cannot recruit uh, ambushers as of yet click on Ithaca and you're going to be able to see what you can and cannot do you want to be able to get to heavy sword skirmishers and eventually warriors of Ithaca which are the ultimate ones but that is going to be in the long long game Sword skirmishers you can get uh, from, sorry, amb ambushers you can get from over here, I believe. No, those are island skirmishers. So you can get uh, the uh, ambushers, which is what you want in the long term for your army as a hit and run army. It, you can get them if you build a military camp, which is a main building in the main building, uh, main settlement, the provincial capital. I used to think they were able to be recruited as well from smaller settlements but it seems to have changed uh but yeah you'll be able to build that very shortly as soon as you get up to your next settlement uh well settlement the citadel which you're going to need a little bit of population growth but you'll get there so don't worry too much about it but keep that in mind as you go along now this is important you have stone you have food and you will have bronze the one thing you don't have is wood so you're going to go on royal decrees this is your research your research is going to be really important and you can notice that you have royal timber. Now, something you can do to cheapen the cost of everything is to essentially go military architects and to go military builders. This allows you to build military buildings faster and also get the craving for conflict, which is going to cost you 300 gold. However, what I highly recommend is you go either for the royal granaries, that extra 280 food is really nice and it gives you the public service down the line which is four the other option is to go for treasure hall which gives you that extra 20 gold which allows you to trade and get the good stuff plus also giving you bonus to your units i prefer growth over everything else in the early game but as soon as you finish the royal granaries get the treasure hall get this royal stone those basic resources you're gonna need because damn if it's not hard to get resources going now, since we're almost finished with turn one, it's also a good idea to take stock of where you are. You currently have someone who really does not like you up here in the north. You have the uh, 
uh, curates uh, in the Balkan area, they're gonna not like you at all, but most probably they will not send assaults towards you. And if they do, you can hold them in Ithaca with a relatively small garrison, as well as a small army that you decide to put there. That's gonna be an important uh, thing to keep an eye on, not necessarily worry too much about. Your real worry is you want to finish this guy as soon as possible. The Telebones are a pain in the ass if you let them grow. They will keep sending armies and they will keep trying to take over your entire region. So just go down there and wipe them out and that's what, exactly what we're going to do. Then as you look across the sea, you have two factions. You have Elise here and you have the Ionians. These two factions, I highly recommend you wipe out. The Elis, they don't personally dislike you that much, but they will kind of be pissed with you if you decide to take out the Ionians, which I normally take out first. And I also would like to take out the uh, Curates eventually, and this gives you a good staging ground to go either which direction. Plus, it also gives you a good idea and a chance to get in contact with the Corinthians and the Mycenaeans, who are your allies. Corinthians, you might need to wipe out to trade with the Mycenaeans and with all the other uh, factions that are your friends. You can build something, and I recommend you build the grain carts, as that will give you a little bit extra food and growth in this region, as well as keeping everything nice and spicy. Keep in mind, all of these units cost you um, upkeep in terms of food, and eventually, as you go up higher to higher tier units, they will cost you upkeep in terms of bronze. So start looking for bronze regions such as this one. It's very easy. This is food. This is wood. This is bronze and that is stone very simple very easy and you'll get along so you're gonna have a bronze region down here then you can definitely go either for this for wood or go up here for wood that is why it's also a good idea to take all of those as it will help you build your settlements faster build your resources faster okay that is turn one in turn two you're gonna notice that the telebo and send a very small army up this way ignore it you're gonna scare the living bejesus out of them very soon what you want is to get your spy and send him all the way up to here to near Ithaca as that's going to be a good position. While you're at it, start building a boathouse in Ithaca that's going to give you food, growth and all the other wonderful things such as boosting all the resources in the region. If you decide not to go for that, you can build other stuff. However, it's honestly the best building that you can build at the moment. With good old Odysseus, you're going to put him on forced march and you're just going to go to town, trying to get as close as possible to the city of Hire, and you're going to be able to get there relatively easily. Just over there, and you're going to be a okay. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen, this was turn two. As you can see, this good guy ran all the way over here. Put yourself in normal march, get yourself to this area, and this is tricky, okay? Uh, the first few times you're going to muck it up, but keep trying and eventually you'll be able to attack on the same turn. Because if you disembark from any other region apart from that, you will lose. Now the best part of this, you can get a Candian victory. Pyrrhus has not existed at this point in time. However, if you do get the Candian victory, you're going to be in a bit of a pickle. Because all of your army is going to die. So what do I recommend? I recommend you fight this battle and you win it the normal way. This settlement is a bit more defensive than the other one. And since they have a balance of power quite similar to us, there's a big, big chance they will just decide to stay inside the settlement. Guess who that benefits? Us. Why does it benefit us? Well, we're the guys that have a ridiculous amount of ammunition and a demigod that fires a bow that is essentially an artillery so let's just get started moving up our army we hope that they don't charge at us and they are not brilliant they might just charge out if they deem that they've taken too much damage but that is fine turn off uh, skirmish mode and turn off fire at will because we want to conserve our ammunition as fast as possible send three of your guys one way and two of your guys the other and this way there you go and you guys can start firing and if you start firing they might charge forwards just send in units to block that 
Oh, no, that's just absolutely fine. You guys come over here and fire at will. Okay, we are good. You can fire at will as well, and that should be able to kill them. And you should be able to melt that militia. There you go. Good boys. Good lads. Good lads. They're trying to shoot our little guys there, but we're fine. Uh, this is also you come over here and start shooting into the sides of these guys. Fall back slightly and you shoot over there. Those are skirmishers. You shoot at them. There you go. And these guys are fine. Okay, you fall in and you do your thing. And these guys are dying. All right. And there you go. Simple as that. This is how you deal with this um, type of garrison. You just slowly take them out piecemeal and you're going to be just doing fine. Um, this is what I mean about Odysseus, by the way. If he manages to get a land a shot, you should see like 12 of them just die. Come on. Yeah, just it, it's just an artillery barrage. And if he gets it at an angle that is very good for him, he's going to do really well. Uh, you charge in. Oh, we killed our harpies. We let them in there. Uh, go in there and kill them. This blob is dying. Okay. And you go capture the settlements out there. Because, hey, isn't that what you do? We've captured that. Brilliant. All right. You go over there and you come here. So we shoot into the rear of this. Oh boy, those poor sword skirmishers. They're shooting to their heart's content. They're coming in. Okay, you come back here and you shoot at the rear of those. Go in. And I need the islanders to go there. You kill that. Odysseus is doing the damage. They're doing fine. They're doing fine. And these guys are melting. Of course, keep in mind they have a lot of shields. And if you don't have shields, that that's going to happen. That's going to happen. And they're going to get speared from the rear. Like this guy just got so many kills just from shooting at the rear of that. Yeah, and just melted everything over there. Um, just charge and fight for the center. That will give them a pause. And I'm going to need you to go up there. Make sure they run. And you shoot at that. You run away because I don't want you to die from friendly fire. And that is friendly fire. All right. At this point, we're just... It's a giant brawl in the center, but I think that is our game. Uh, Odysseus comes here. Go over there. You shoot. Yes. Two hundred kills. Not bad. Not bad at all. Beautiful. And I mean, we cut the picture point. We're getting the defensive positions. And that's it. And congratulations. This is all there is to have a really good start to a campaign with Odysseus. Now, from here, it is up to you where you go with this. You start here on the islands, just off the coast, and you decide where you're going to invade. Are you going to invade up here? Are you going to invade? 
Are you going to invade the Quitares up here with their beautiful coastal settlements and throw yourself up to conquer all into the Balkans? Travel overland through the Balkans, through the mystical lands up this way, find giants and other great mythological creatures. So then you can go into good old Thracia and prepare to ambush the great city of Troy itself. Or are you going to take a longer route conquering the coast of Greece and get all your allies under one banner, unifying their forces and getting your strength to cloud nine? It is up to you to decide what you do with this. Now, I highly recommend that you do stabilize yourself by conquering this region all the way up here and start expanding concentrically, meaning you take a layer, you stabilize, you conquer a region, you stabilize it, you build it up, and then you move on forward. Keep in mind that you're going to also have to deal with the quest lines to get the um, mythical creatures on your side. Great hunt for either the Griffin, the Cerberus, or the Hydra. With Odysseus, I think the Griffin or the Hydra are the best because they the Hydra has a lot of poison and magic that slows down the enemy, whereas the Griffin is able to have flight and run around the battlefield doing dive bombs into the enemy, especially the Sir Griffins are incredibly strong. We'll see them later in another video. So keep that in mind. Now, finally, something that we should have a small discussion about and we'll do so in depth in a much later video is administration. Administration is the new upkeep mechanic that allows you, think of it as supply lines, that allows you to not expand too fast and control snow, uh, snowballing. I have not yet experienced this to the maximum, so I have not yet taken it up all the way to administration tier 10, which is 421. But I found it to be quite enjoyable in the sense that you understand what and how your administration is going to go up. It does tell you what buildings, what uh, abilities, how many settlements you have causes administration, and it will tell you also for example, generals, units, and settlements all increase administration. And each administration tier has a bonus and a negative. For example, the current bonuses, we have no extra burdens to our cost because we're such a small kingdom. Yet at the same time, because we're such a small kingdom, administration is very low. And by extension, our research, which is administration, is going to stay low and royal decrease. And this increases and changes accordingly. When you are at full, you have a replenishment cap, which is increased. You get more uh, efficiency. You get more recruitment capacity. And all of your units cost a ridiculous amount extra. So keep that in mind when you are expanding and make sure that you are ready for the next tier because this can be like taking a carpet right underneath your feet and falling down collapsing your empire because you have not planned extensively for it ladies and gentlemen i hope this guide was useful if you want more videos on troy or other total wars or any other game that i fancy at the time please do subscribe and i will see you again very shortly take care and goodbye